overcame about a million and one obstacles to successfully navigate the entire length of the Amazon River, right from its source to the sea. And not only that, he also captured his entire journey with his little video camera. So he came back to Canada really excited about the idea of doing a book and a documentary film. But that is when things started to get really difficult. The Amazon is one of the world's most treacherous rivers. Before the year 2000, five teams had attempted to navigate the Amazon's entire length. All but one failed with fatal consequences. In 1999, three friends, a South African, an Australian, and a Canadian, decided to attempt a second descent of the world's largest river. And I remember as a kid how much I actually enjoyed reading other people's uh, stories of journeys they did and, and, uh, or seeing an, on TV a documentary of somebody's journey. Our expedition would begin on a beach bordered in the Pacific. We would then hike 300 kilometers to the Continental Divide and the source of the Amazon. When I got home, we were pretty excited about the footage we took. And there was a production house in Victoria who absolutely loved it. So I said, yeah, who, let's sign away. And, I signed the bottom of the contract and, and uh, ended up waiting a long time. I mean, I just ended up sitting in a shoebox at the, the back of the office for, for all that time. So it, it, uh, it was very, very frustrating for myself because the footage that we put all this effort and uh, energy and risked our lives to get suddenly doesn't even belong to us anymore and, and we've received nothing. A literary agent, uh, uh, he saw an article and uh, he contacted me and asked if I'd be interested in writing a book. When I finally signed the contract with the publisher, I, I, it was probably one of the most exciting days of my life. And knowing that finally you can walk into any bookstore in Canada and there's, there's their smiling faces looking back at you. Right after the Amazon book came out, my publisher went bankrupt. Suddenly it became out of print. There's no more distribution and now there's no more book in the bookstores. As an author, I can uh, purchase the books often for 50% and I'm allowed to sell them any which way through presentations or I'm sure they've never fathomed it before, but <laughs> going door to door, I picked up the phone and phoned the distribution department and ordered uh, 250 books, knowing that you know, there were, <laughs> it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be around much longer. Uh, I thought, you know, I bet you'd probably work quite well. A real legitimate Canadian author knocking on the door saying, hey, uh, I've got a book for sale. Hi there. Uh, my name is Colin Angus, and uh, I'm a Canadian author. Right? I remember very clearly the first door I knocked on. I wanted to quit right there and then. I'm like, this sucks. This really sucks. And, uh, but I, I, I told myself beforehand I'd go for at least one hour. No matter how bad it was, I'd go for an hour. And then suddenly I sold two in the last 15 minutes. So I kept going. Uh, contract expired and the footage finally came back to me and I was scared to, to let anyone else touch his tapes and I felt well you know it can't be that difficult I mean we filmed it without any experience why not edit the thing without any experience and what I needed money for was to finally put together this documentary and, and that's the main reason why I started selling the books door to door and uh, I sort of saw this as being the way I was, I was desperate to get, get some the, money together to, uh, to actually buy a computer where I can start editing the footage. I mean, the most important thing is that people enjoy it. And of course, on top of that, uh, if, if we get a reasonable audience, it's always nice. It's kind of nice showing your debut when there's, when there's people there to see it. Of course, hey, Colin will be here after, and okay. I'll rush up as soon as possible, and then somebody's selling it. Is it cool with you after. when we get the doors open a few minutes early? The queue's at the end of the block, so hang on to that. Okay. Door prize. There's a door prize, so hang on to your stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Did you receive it? Yeah, I was going to ask you if you've done it once or something. Uh, I have no phone. I'd actually never even touched a video camera in my life. Not once. And the same with the other two guys. Something I, I spent the whole summer yeah. doing this, and uh, which I'm... I'm very happy to be showing for the very first time tonight, and uh, I hope you guys all enjoy it. Thank you very much. Just seeing the documentary for myself there on the big screen after seeing the computer that size for so long was quite incredible, so I'm uh, very, very happy with it. All right, David, what's up with Colin Angus? Is he, you know, ah, adrenaline junkie guy? Is that why he's doing this? No, not at all. He's, he's as far from an adrenaline junkie as you can imagine. He's really like a dreamer. 
when he was a kid, he'd go to the library, right. he'd, he got hooked on the adventure section, he'd read about all these cultures, foreign cultures and exotic places, and unlike the rest of us that probably went through that phase at the age of 10 or whatever, he grew up and went and did all that stuff. Yeah, I know, that's impressive, that is impressive that he actually went and did it. Tell me how you met him. Well, I met him, I heard about him from one of the editors at Zed, who uh, was, you know, sitting at home, enjoying a coffee or whatever, the doorbell rang and he went and opened the door and it was Colin selling his book. So, right. you know, when he came into work the next day and was like, oh, David, call Colin. It's amazing what this because, guy's doing. Because this guy, his book, so, his, his book sold in the United States, did fine. In Canada, started publishing, was the one that published his book. They went under, mm -hmm. right? He bought all the books. He did. I mean, sort of in the 11th hour, he called the warehouse and said, great, count me in, I'll buy all 250 of them. Yeah. And then because of his author's discount, you know, he could make a little bit of money, but how's he going to sell them? But you see, to me, that's what strikes me about him, the, the perseverance and the tenacity. If I was faced with my publisher going under, I'm like, ah, oh, career over. He goes, no, now, you know, door mm -hmm. to door, which I think is what, uh, you know, what impresses me the most about him. Absolutely, I think it's the same kind of character traits that allowed him to make it down the river, right. that allowed him to finally get his film out, and every time something would come up with the book, he'd just go, okay, I'll, I'll do it this way. All right, know? I'll read the book, he can continue on the adventures. Okay. <laughs>